trying to get away from uh, the hassle and the expense of the city. Uh, and if I was going to be a New York culture vulture, I shouldn't have gotten married and had children. But basically, ch children are very pin you down. And uh, if I was going to be pinned down, if we were going to be pinned down, why not be pinned down uh, at least somewhere where we could park the car for free and, <laughs> and, and get some you know, free air, uh, grass and sunshine and so on. I didn't know when <laughs> we moved it, <coughs> I'd be up there for the rest of my life. <coughs> I thought to become a serious American writer went on to write a novel or two. I was a New Yorker contributor and I hadn't written a novel, so I gave myself this uh, sabbatical, which stretched then into a, into a lifestyle that, that lasted all my life. I had this rented house in this uh, North Shore town, and uh, after writing a couple short stories, which I took so I knew I, I wouldn't starve uh, <laughs> yet. Meanwhile, we were getting used to the town and to country suburban living, and uh, bought a house. Uh, I actually begged a Guggenheim uh, grant so I could feel I could take a break from trying to write and sell short stories. It was a mere thousand dollars in those days. A thousand dollars, thousand dollars went a, went a much longer, longer way than it does now. And uh, I felt to, I said I was a Pennsylvania, you know, Dutch, Dutchman, and I thought if I'd taken the money out, I'd write the book. And so I wrote have it done. For much of '59, uh, much of 1959. Uh, so that was how I wrote Rabbit Run. As somebody who's had a family of your own and has been producing an average amount of work every year for 50 some odd years, how did you strike that balance? In those days, you know, the man worked and earned the bread, and the wife took care of the children, whether it was one or, as in my case, four. After the children got to be uh, four in number and all very young and pretty noisy, they couldn't help it, uh, my wife suggested I get out of the house. For her too, in a way. And there is something very nice about having children in a home. They bring into it all the, sort of the new things, the new gadgets, the new words, and so that it's, it's a plus you know, for a writer up to a point to have children around. But after a while, they do get to be distracted. So, so I rented a room and tried to go to work. But I was seeing it as a job and as a livelihood, and I think I was maybe the last generation that could actually try to enter the literary profession uh, as, if, as if it was a trade and something you did and you produced a product that was useful enough that you'd get paid for it, and now I think it's harder. There was a lot more magazines that paid for short stories, and a dollar went a long way. Well, I've been rereading my old uh, short stories, and of course the, the sums of money that the people deal in is laughable. Uh, two men eating lunch in a New York restaurant for less than five dollars. Uh, I could hardly believe these figures, but there they were. What brings you to your writing desk every morning? To put the more fearful, uh, anxiety-ridden spin on this, uh, there's the fear that you've somehow neglected to say what was really yours to say. I mean, you've neglected somehow the key thing. It's not likely I've written a lot. I must have somewhere uh, touched on almost every aspect of my life and my experience. Nevertheless, there's this haunting fear that maybe the thing, the thing you left out is going to finally be captured. <laughs>